hell yeah. Star Wars The Force Awakens. It's about fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. The movie we've all been waiting for. Interestingly enough, however, this wasn't my most anticipated movie of this year. It actually was Avengers Age of Ultron. However, Star Wars The Force Awakens was my second most anticipated movie of this year. So, yeah. <sighs> Yay. This movie stars um, Harrison Ford, Mark Hamill, for like a second, Carrie Fisher, Adam Driver, Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Andy Serkis, Lupita Nyong'o, Dama Hoglins, Gleason, Anthony, Anthony Daniels, Max von Sindom, Sindow, Peter Mayha, Gwendolyn Christie, and who else? By the way, there's a bunch of cameos in this movie. Um, Simon Pegg has a small role. Uh, for those who didn't know, so and Daniel Craig has a small role in this movie as well. So yeah, um, Warwick Davis um, was in this film as well. He was an Ewok in the first few movies. So yeah, that's pretty. That's interesting. Um, is there anybody else of importance that should be mentioned out? Um, let's see. No, I don't think so. I don't really think there's anybody else. Ewan McGregor was, had a voiceover for a quick second. Uh, Alec Guinness had a voiceover for a quick second. And the way they did it is actually interesting. Um, because I know, I think he's dead, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, that's basically it for the cast. Um, 10 seconds spoiler warning for those who have yet to see it for whatever reason and haven't already. Uh, stop the video, go check that out, and come back and watch the rest of this review. 10 seconds spoiler warning as usual, starting now. Now. Okay, so 10 seconds are, seconds are up. So for those who have yet to actually watch this movie and haven't already, please leave a comment down below or be messaging me that never gave you a fair warning because as usual, I did. So yeah, as usual, quick synopsis. Likes and dislikes and then the rates. So basically in this movie, how the fuck do I describe The Force Awakens? You have The First Order, right? Yeah, how do I, how do I say this? Um, yeah, you have basically The First Order who's trying to take over the galaxy, uh, you have the resistance who's trying to prevent it, what, they kidnap Oscar Isaacs, Poe Dameron, as Oscar Isaacs, Poe Dameron, um, they kidnap Poe Dameron during one of their raids, um, they kidnap him, one of the stormtroopers, I guess they brainwash the stormtroopers, and one of the um, stormtroopers kind of goes away from brainwashing and becomes his normal self, and that's John Boyega, he's fed, so he basically rescues Oscar Isaac says, take me away from here. I need to get away. I don't like what's going on here. So they do that and they and within like two or three minutes they form a brotherly they a brotherly bond, which is something that six hours in the fucking prequels they couldn't they couldn't do. Um between Anakin and Kenobi. So yeah, that I knew that one I knew when that happened. This movie's gonna be fantastic. On top of what already had happened. Um so you have that there are Starship, their their X-wing fighter plane or whatever, jets crash land lands in Jakku. Oscar Isaac just kind of goes missing for like the rest of the movie, basically, to like halfway through the movie to like third act, and that's when Finn, who's John Boyega, he meets up with Daisy Ridley's character, which Daisy Ridley's character, which is Ray, and now you know they find BB-8, and and now they're trying to get to the Resistance to help with the Resistance and try to get. This map to find Han, not Han Solo, to find Mark Hamill's character, Luke Skywalker, trying to find Luke Skywalker. You know where the fuck did Luke go? Um, they meet up, Han, they get Millennium, Millennium Falcon, um, and they meet up with Han Solo and Chewie, which is great. Um, after th after that, they meet up with Maz Katana for a couple seconds, um, where she kind of explains the Force in a sense. Um, and what's going on, what's been going on, they, she kind of explains to Rey how she's special, and you kind of get get the sense of that, especially after she picks up the Luke's lightsaber, and she kind of just has, like, memories, kind of, of what has happened, so that was pretty cool, and then they get, eventually get to the Resistance, and they're like, uh, oh yeah, by the way, Kylo Ren is your, uh, son, um, Han Solo, which I, which is something for the audience, you know, that we didn't really know, or at least I didn't know, um, so yeah, Kylo Ren is bent solo, so yeah, 
Yeah, and you, you find out that Leia hasn't seen Han Solo in at least 10 to 20 years. Um, so that happens. They have to destroy the Death Killer Star ship or whatever, which is basically... Which is basically like to Death Star times a hundred um, in size, so they have to now get, um, kill the Star Killer. Um, pretty similar to how they did it in the first movie, all the way back in Episode Four, A New Hope. Um, and yeah, and then shit. One of the most emotional scenes I've ever seen happens, and Han Solo. Why? Kylo Ren, the little dick bad Kylo Ren, kills Han Solo, his dad. You're like, why? 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 But just the setup of how it was, you you knew there was no way in hell Han Solo was gonna survive that shit. So, yeah. And then one of the most promoted scenes in the movie finally happens where you have Finn facing off Kylo Ren. Finn gets his ass kicked pretty fucking easily. Let's just go with that. So, the lightsaber is right there. Um, It's in, within the snow. Kylo Ren's is trying to use the force to get it. And it just goes... And it kind of just does a curve and it goes into Ray's hands. And Kylo Ren is like, shit, this girl is more powerful than me. Because we already saw previously that she she's force sensitive. She And it appears that she is better than Kylo Ren at using the force. Well, that and Kylo Ren hasn't really had much resistance, apparently. Um, using the force as many of the Sith Lords and Jedis have either been dead or gone missing. Uh, so, yeah. Uh... And then you have Snoke who's going over Adam Driver and Tom Hogley since like you have to go go here and do this and do that. And I assume Snoke is gonna be explained later on in the movies. Um Captain Phasma is like barely there, so yeah, sure, okay. Um Solo, no, why? 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 Mm. <sighs> Oh yeah, by the way, at the end, um, they find Luke Skywalker, uh, because C-3P always decides to wake the fuck up after, like, 30 years. So, yeah. I can assure you that it's better than the prequels. And episode 6. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, Star Wars is back. Star Wars is back. Uh, and it's going to be back next year, and then the year after that, and the year after that, and the year after that. By the way, we have anthology Star Wars uh, movies coming out next year. Next year, it's going to be Rogue One. After that, we have Episode Eight. And then after that, we should get the Han Solo, Han Solo movie, origin story. And then we get Episode Nine, and then we get another anthology film. And yay. Um, this film was great. This, this, this is what every Star Wars m movie fan needed to see. This is the type of movie we needed to see. The sole complaint I could see anybody giving, and I did kind of realize this when I was watching the movie, but I was like, shut up, it's Star Wars, it doesn't really matter, it's not the prequels, so shut the fuck up. Um, it's the fact that it kind of, in a way, the plot is similar to, to A New Hope, the first Star Wars movie. Um, and just the way it's, it, it is basically similar, you have, um, this, you have this Force-sensitive character who go, uh, meets up with a trainer um they have to destroy this humongous star destroying this giant spaceship that's gonna destroy most of the universe and he stopped that and yeah the trainer gets killed on the way um and yeah, i mean there are some similarities but it's a completely different film and it is awesome for it it is awesome um solo fuck Han Solo fucking dies. Han Solo fucking dies. Shit. Um. Then you have Chewie. He's like, oh! he just starts blasting off stormtroopers. That was pretty great. However, I do feel like they mishandled the Han Solo death a bit. I think it would have been had a more emotional impact because Princess Leia. She said right before Han Solo left, um, right before he died or whatever that, uh, make him come back or whatever. I think it would have been more emotional. It had. First off, Kylo Ren put put back on his mask, showing that he is completely completely in the dark side. And then instead of him falling off to the side like he did, have him just fall off in that passageway, have Chewie pick him up, and when at the end of the film you have Chewie carrying Han Solo's dead body, gives it to Princess Leia or someone so they could bury it or whatever. She hug 
Chewy, Chewbacca and then her hug Ray like she did in the film. Because in the film, she only hugged Ray. It would have been more emotional if she had hugged Chewbacca and then Ray. So, yeah. Yeah. It's Star Wars. What the fuck do you expect? It's, it's incredible. Let's just go with that. It's incredible. The writing, fucking incredible. The acting, yeah, it's great. Um, Mark Hamill was in it for like two seconds, but whatever. Um, Han Solo, what's his face? Harrison Ford. Probably one of the best performance in recent years, definitely. Um, Daisy Ridley, she, this movie is gonna um, boost um, boost her status for sure. Um, yeah, she's gonna get recognized for this. Um, definitely, Oscar Isaac, he's he's in that rise, and even though he's not that, he doesn't have a big role in this movie. I do feel like he's gonna have a big role as the movies go on. But you know, here's just he's still in his rise. Um, if anything, just kind of notice him a bit more. John Boyega, um, similar thing. He's in his rise, but I really do feel like this movie um, pushes popularity. Now, as who my favorite characters between the three new people, Poe Dameron, Finn, and Ray. I'm actually gonna go. Many people say Ray. I actually like Finn a bit more, just a tad more. Um, I just feel like Finn is really funny. Um, he has really com great comedic timing. He's really funny. He's a fish out of water. Like, like. Poe Dameron, he's not really a fish out of water. He's he knows what's going on, but Ray and Finn, or Finn, they're a complete fish out of waters. But his character is a bit more interesting because he came from the dark side. Now he go, he's going to the light, so that's really interesting. Ray, she's force sensitive. You know, is she Luke Skywalker's daughter? Probably. <clears throat> that's it's something we do need to find out, and I do feel like they're gonna explain it as the. Movies go on, you know. Are you the daughter of Luke Skywalker? Um, Ray Scott, Ray Skywalker. That sounds pretty good too. So yeah, the the sounds, the special effects, all that. It's great. Star Wars. Okay, it's great. Let's just go with that. It's great. It's not one of the best movies of this year. It. Let me rephrase that. It's not my favorite movie of this year, of this year. However, it is within the top ten movies of this year. It's definitely one of my favorite movies of this year. Star Wars! Star Wars! Dun, 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 Star Wars! Star, uh, 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 Wars! Um, how do you not like Star Wars, okay? Um, Solo dies. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, it's a great film. It's a great film. There's gonna be discussion topics after this. And I wanted to hold off this review, because I actually, I actually did watch this on opening day. I just kind of wanted to hold off on this review just to give people an adequate amount of time to watch this film. If any negatives, I mean, one of them is going to be biased as shit. I didn't want Han Solo to die, but he did. But I'm not going to deduce, deduce points off his death. If anything, I'm going to deduce points on the way they portrayed his death, which I do think could have been better. It was great as it was, but I do think it could have been better. Um, it is familiar. I'll give it that. There are some familiar tropes. Uh, it is similar to A New Hope, but I do think they're gonna stray away from that as the movies go on. Um, and yeah, and they, so yeah, I mean, there are a few negatives, there are some slight negatives. Like Captain Phasma, like, what the fuck happened to her? Apparently she lives at the end of the, she survives, um, so that's good. Hopefully we see a bit more out of her. And yeah, overall, great film. Um, fantastic. Yeah, on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the worst, 10 being the best, and 6 being decent. I'm going to give this movie a 9 out of 10. Fantastic movie. Definitely do check it out if you haven't already. And yeah, that's basically it for this review. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I do movie reviews, TV show reviews, and comic book reviews. Comment down below on your thoughts on the movie. Have you seen it? And if not, why not? And if you have, what are your thoughts on it? Comment all, down to, comment all that down below. Let me know. Like the video, share on Facebook, Twitter, MySpace, or whatever you guys prefer. And that's basically it for now. This is Daniel Mars signing off. Star Wars Ponto dies. Pew. Bye.